Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> kind of excited for carriers. Yeah, let's. We're gonna watch. Let's watch that. I meant to watch that. Contacts. 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 Let's watch that little video. As soon as I figure out what ship I'm gonna get. Uh, something that can have a fighter. Maybe one of the crots, the crates. I kind of don't want to fly a big one though, so I might get one of the crates. Hey lady, don't talk to me like that. Uh, where's the Mark Two? Is it here? Yeah. How do I build this? This it's not mining, is it? Got a collector lump it. No hard points? I don't know what I was doing. Oh, do I have cargo? Oh, Limpets. Uh destroy. Crates is great, mate. I rated eight out of eight. It's a date. <laughs> All right. Mark two. Come here. Come here. <clears throat> Imagine being able to park it outside of a war system and just farm CZs for rep and combat XP. You can do that with a crate? Oh, you farm CZ. I, th I thought you meant park it in the CZ. My bad. I misunderstood. I was thinking like Healy's for Feely's stuff. <laughs> with, the, with the cutters, you know, just sit there and let your turrets do all the work. Oh, you're talking about carriers. Man, I already forgot. <laughs> all right, hold on. Let's get this video. Twitter.com slash Elite Dangerous. They got it on their Twitter, right? Let's kill the music. I mean, that video just gets right to the point. Boop. So in case you guys don't know, this video, this fleet carrier teaser was dropped at BlaveCon uh, last week, I think. This was a feature that was supposed to come the beginning of this year, if I'm not mistaken. And it got postponed. And we were all sad. Okay, I take that back. I was all sad because this was the feature I was looking forward to the most out of the entire update. And they were like, oh, that thing, that fleet carrier thing? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just gonna postpone that. And I was like, no, okay, whatever. And I got over it. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that is coming this year i wasn't expecting to see fleet carriers if at all until the end of 2020 so this was a surprise that it's actually coming this year because there's going to be a big update at the end of 2020 i guess i can play it while i'm running my mouth uh that uh, there's going to be a big big update that we don't know half of what's going to be in it they just tell us it's going to be huge uh at the end of 2020 um, if it's like the current jump stuff, then I'm not going to be as excited. You know how you just, you plot a course and then on the next reset, it jumps. I kind of hope it's not like that, you know, cause that would be a letdown. It will be something, it will be something, you know, but if you can only jump once a week, I really hope it's based on fuel and the more fuel you have, the more you can jump. And make the fuel stupid expensive, you know? Because it should be stupid expensive. This is, look how big this thing is. So if you got fuel, you should be able to jump. So that'll give people incentives to... To actually... Farm. And to actually grind credits. Credits will have meaning again. 
Because once you rich, once you well, let's let's be real. Credits have lost all their meaning since the inception of, of Void Opals. Credits have pretty much lost all their meaning. They, they, there used to be a little bit of a ramp up, but now it's like within a day you can be a millionaire. Um. So I'm hoping that there's a fuel requirement that requires a lot of credits. And I think, you know, it kind of is in line with what, with what Frontier is doing because the fact that they stopped closing up all of the credit faucets, plugging all the holes. Remember every time there was a, a, a gold mine that they would plug the hole and then they just up and decided one day to say, hey, we ain't going to do that no more. Go get rich, you know. I think they may be purposely flooding the economy for this. Which will make credits meaningful again. But then it could it, it, it could introduce a new set of problems if it's not balanced appropriately. So so what you have 10 billion credits if it costs 2 billion to do one thing on the ship, credits are going to be hard to come by. You know on the on the carrier and that's okay for some people that's okay for some people especially like i think about my eve online background and every time i mention eve online people groan but you can't help but make comparisons when it comes to space game economy um i think back to my eve online experience and it's like the top tier stuff you know you make a lot of money but you also spend a lot of money so it, it kind of worked out so if, if the same is true in elite like if you're doing fleet carrier level stuff and you're rich you should be spending a whole lot of money, you know? This is not an entry level thing. Although people are probably going to want it to be crying my immersion. You know, I want to be a solo player. I don't want to have to grind credits to experience, you know, the, the, the FOMO thing that plagued this game so bad. There's, there's a big FOMO problem in Elite Dangerous and hopefully they won't cater to that attitude. FOMO is fear of missing out. So I don't have time to play, but I still want to do something that requires. I still want to do something huge, even though I don't play the game a lot. And at some point, game developers have to put their foot down and go, well, if you can't play, then you just can't do this. Sorry. If more developers said that, we'd have better games today. Am I right? Um... But it looks good. I mean, that's that's not they're not showing us a whole lot in this, which is cool because it's a teaser. What features could you see be included in uh, with the carrier? Um, module storage is the biggest thing on my mind because we. Uh, I think most players who've been playing since the beginning have full module storage. Um, maybe the option to have a single type of engineer. So if you want to have a frameshift drive engineer, you want to have a, uh, and this will cost money. Basically a single engineer type. If not that. A material trader. I think material trader might be a better idea on your fleet carrier. Um, and yeah, monks, it's like a guild house. So if you think about, like, I, I'm playing Final Fantasy 14 right now. In your Final Fantasy 14 house, you can have an NPC that can do uh, repairs. You can have vendors. You can have uh, uh, access to an auction house or whatever. So. All the amenities you would find in the world, you can consolidate them into your house in Final Fantasy XIV. So I'm thinking this carrier should have something similar. Not one-to-one, -one, but there should be some level of convenience that you can unlock. And I, I honestly think there should be a tax on it. There should be a weekly fee or something to encourage squadrons to, you know, fill up their guild bank with credits. Um... Yeah. And maybe this could be the first level of space legs. Like this can be a this could be a social hub for your group to walk around and look at each other's glam.
One thing I don't think they're going to do that players are going to ask for. Uh, which I, I really believe players are going to ask for this. Uh, is customization on your fleet carrier. I mean, who doesn't want a purple fleet carrier, right? So, um, that's probably going to be really hard for Frontier to do, though. These are big ships, and to just <laughs> just to reskin them might be a big undertaking. It, 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 I don't think it's going to be as easy as it seems, honestly. But I think players are going to ask for it like day one. Hey, I want to be able to put decals on my fleet carrier. Yeah, about that. About that. Oh, yeah, let's talk about arcs. I, I, I feel a little... I got mixed feelings about arcs, guys. Um... The reason why I got mixed feelings about arcs is because of, uh, I think it's, I, <sighs> no, let, let, let me just, let me just say this. Arcs is a good idea, right? In-game way, to, uh, an in-game currency to earn cosmetics has always been a good idea, but year one players, include myself, coffee, others in the chat. Can probably tell you this is something we've been begging for for a very long time and i have mixed feelings because i think it may be a little bit late <laughs> I, th I think it might be a little bit late and uh i don't know if it's going to help that much uh it's a good idea but if it would have been implemented a long time ago it would have had a much more positive impact than it will now um, so, uh, yeah, I'm glad to see it, but I wish we would have seen it in 2015, you know? Like, that could have been a great thing to add to, uh, not even year one, the year two, that could have been a good thing to add, you know? So that's my only thing with ARCs. It's a great idea. I just fear it's a little too late. That's, it's not really a negative thing. It's just, that's why I call it mixed feelings. I think it's... It's a good idea. It's just really, 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 really late. Really late. Has anybody in chat actually been doing the Interstellar initiatives? I haven't even been keeping up with them. I'm curious as to how they have been. Uh, how they've been doing. The last thing I remember reading is because it was on the front page of Reddit was like the thing about the forum posts. How they did a poll on the forum for an interstellar initiative and you know a lot of people were laughing at that on reddit i know they've had another one since and uh they actually introduced i think some items associated with one because i still get their newsletter i still get their newsletter so i still see some of that stuff but i really haven't uh been keeping up with the news is that your new ship Nah, this is a, a teaser video that was released last week by Frontier. A new feature that's coming called Fleet Carriers. This is a huge carrier ship that we players will have some sort of control of. So, we're just, I'm looping this teaser video because it's brand, brand spanking new. I do know a bunch of people that were excited about the new MC for AX stuff. Yeah. Um, there were some new modules and new guns or some new stuff that was introduced, right? So. And I think you had to choose a side. I'm, I'm starting to come back to me. You had to choose a side in order to unlock a certain module, right? So they're slipping in new modules that way. Slipping in new modules. I think that's a good idea. You had to choose a side to vote, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So I get what Frontier is doing. They're, they're, they're giving us the quote-unquote power to shape the universe. So the things that are actually being implemented are voted on, unquote, by players. It's not a terrible idea, but, you know. I'm always happy to see new modules.
Wait, an AX... The multi-cannon one over a missile launcher? Don't we already have an AX on multi-cannon? Am I... Am I... Wait. What year is it? Am I in the right universe? I could have swore we already had an AX multi-cannon. <laughs> it's not exclusively AX. Oh! Okay. Okay. I gotta agree with coffee. I think I would have preferred a missile in that case. I think I would have preferred a missile missiles. Especially if I'm killing If I'm killing swarms and stuff. Cause you have to deal with swarms a lot. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, coffee. So, hey reverse ninja, welcome back. Uh Missiles are the only thing, one thing missing for targets. I, I would have, I think if I would have voted, if I would have voted, I would have went for missiles too. It's not the end of <laughs> Forms, man, never trust forms. It doesn't count against the Forex module in it. Yeah. So that's good. So that makes the fight against the Thargoids better. So that's a good addition. I can't really complain because I had a chance to vote and I didn't vote. So I'm just going to accept what the community voted for. But I tell you, I can tell you in retrospect, if I was doing that community goal or, or I'm sorry, uh, the interstellar initiative, if I was doing that, I definitely would have voted for missiles. But either way, Thargoids are going to perish. I'm excited, man. I'm glad that. Uh, I'm glad we're getting something this year, you know, and that's that's kind of sad. <laughs> That I'm excited that we're getting the feature that we were supposed to get at the beginning of the year, but we're getting it at the end of this year, and I'm excited about it. But it, it just goes to show how much this game has on me, man. I just. <laughs> this, is, this is sad, though, man. Oh. I remember a day when me and like 12 other people took a raid team of anacondas to kill a single cyclops with AX missile launchers. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the teaser, guys. Um, so. <sighs> let's take a look at this arcs announcement. Don't they have a post on it? Yeah, Ark's back. Okay. So. <clears throat> so September is three months away. July. Yeah, two months. Basically two months away. Um, just don't scroll past the post. Uh, new in-ship starter ex experience. Okay. This one I got to think about because I could have... I guess they're extending the new player experience they already added, which is before you get into the ship. As I talk this out, I'll understand it. Because a lot of the new player experience stuff that they added um, UI-wise was before you create your character had all that cool stuff and then after you create your character they put you in the starter system and i guess that they're gonna merge the tutorials which was like a separate almost like a separate application they're gonna put that right into the game world at the start of the experience commanders uh will be guided through essential pilot training by a flight instructor from the pilots federation during this training, a number of lessons will be taught to commanders from space flight to combat. And I think it's safe to do this uh, because of the restricted system and you can't troll people while they're doing this. You can try. Um, but I think the restricted system 
makes this more feasible. Did LaveCon get streamed? It did, but Frontier uh, asked the LaveCon folks not to stream it, the panel. Uh, so LaveCon was streamed. The Frontier panel was not. Um, they have the reasons, I guess. I guess, you know, they have the reasons. So you'll be able to do basic flight controls and scanning, supercruise navigation, a combat exercise, and completing the hyperspace jump and a star and docking at a starport. So that's a good four bullet point first lesson, honestly. Because this will teach you targeting and hard points. Which I think you have to know for everything in the game, right? People say, oh, why do I need combat? Well, this will teach you how to deploy hard points and target things. Um, which is very important. I mean, some of this is going to, you know, this is going to introduce it. This is going to reinforce it. So I think it's a good idea. And then you get the dock. Ooh, that's going to be fun to watch. All the training will include voiceover across our support languages, which is good. Uh, you'll be able to access it in the training section via the right panel. Oh, I was wrong. So it is still going to be segmented off. It's not going to be in the actual world. Oh. Well, forget that point I made. Because it's going to be probably going to launch the training application. But it's going to be a new training application. Okay. Yep. So it's going to be like CQC, but training. <laughs> it's own separate thing. I, okay, that's not bad either. Okay, the new library system. One of the best things about this is that you'll be able to change your skin at the main menu. I was excited when I read that. Where is that picture? Arx is cool, but... To be able to change your skin at the main menu, yes, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. You don't have to go in the game to do this stuff. But Arx is the new... Arx is the new currency. Um, bottom blue point. Yeah, there it is. Bullet bullet point. Um, this is this is going to be fun to watch because whenever there is an in-game currency that you can earn, just think about what we go through today about credits. Just just let's just get your mind in the right place. Think about what we go through today about earning credits and people want to earn credits and complain about the lack of earning credits during certain activities. When you tie cosmetics to that activity, players' senses become heightened. <laughs> they go they go hypersensitive to arcs. There are going to be spreadsheets, there are going to be calculations, there are going to be virtual robotic programs to tell you when to wake up and when to grind arcs and when not to. <laughs> it's, people are going to be really, really sensitive to this and Frontier better brace themselves. Because I can, I can guarantee no matter what system they put in place for how they earn arcs, somebody out there or some group of people are going to think it's not enough or it's too much. Well, if, if you think it's too much, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, come on. Free skins? So the, the, the rate that you earn arcs is going to be extremely important. So I don't know what they're going to do. Because when I read about this, I was thinking to myself, how does Frontier make money? They I, uh, Two things come to mind when I think about how Frontier makes money. The first thing is... They make money from all of us buying alternate accounts because we're, we're addicted to the game. So they have a sale and they make money from us buying three and four alternate accounts. And we're like, <laughs> we're like Obsidian Ant. We got 40 accounts, right? So they make money that way, just like Eve did. But the second way is cosmetics. They make money off us buying skins for everything and gifting skins to other people. Um... 
frankly, this might cut into that revenue. So I don't know how much they're going to offer on the store. Because I think people are going to make the assumption. I think they're going to wrongly make the assumption that everything on the shore is on the store is going to be available via arcs. And I'm don't think that's going to be the case unless they stated in this post. I don't think they did. I read this once, so I may have missed it. I don't think everything on the shop is going to be available via arc. So if you want that iridescent skin, I got to tell you, it's probably going to cost you money anyway. Um, I think this is going to be a further extension of the decal system that we got from community goals. They're going to have a set of game extras that are going to be built just for arcs. I don't think they're going to be ship kits that you see on the, on the, on the shop. Now, I don't think they're going to be paint jobs. You see on the shop. Now, I don't think they're going to be bobbleheads. That's just my speculation. Like I said, they don't have anything on here to state the, the, the opposite, but you got to think how, do, how does frontier make money? If they just put the whole shop as being earnable, how are they going to make money? Unless they know something I don't, you know. Um, oh, you're right. You're right, Sergeant Cracker. I didn't even see that. Okay. I'll stand down. I didn't know it could be purchased. I thought it was only earnable. Everything I said is just is moot. Forget everything I just said. Okay, bringing parody across all of our platforms. I don't. I don't. I don't as someone, I gotta see it. Um. I gotta see it. I really hope they have cross platform, but that's that's just a big wish. Uh, I got to see it though, because I mean we already got parity on patches, right? But Microsoft and Sony, man, they're really weird about the stores in general. You could talk to Warframe about that. I'm not. I'm. This is not a dig at, at Frontier. This is a dig at Sony and Microsoft having parity across. <sighs> okay. Well, we'll see. Allow commanders to earn customization items through gameplay. Because even X on Xbox and PS4 for Warframe, we don't even have parity across those guys. Because there's some stuff on Xbox and PS4 that we can't get on PC. This is weird like that. Um, when I see when I had seen bobbleheads, first thing that popped into my head, Warframe. I know, right? Noggles. Allow commanders to earn customization items through gameplay as part of the update. Arcs can be able to acquire cosmetics and by play the game we'll ask commanders to change how they play simply being an active player and engaging the game is all that's required. Oh no. So that means we're getting are we gonna get login rewards? Cause this is skirting on that free to play model. Twenty twenty? Well I gotta say it, chat. Somebody's probably already said it. But at the end of 2020, will Elite Dangerous be free to play? Huh. I mean, this is this is setting the building blocks for it. Uh, a number of arcs. They did specifically say no free to play. Okay. <laughs> okay. A number of arcs can be earned each week. It will be instantly added to the player's arcs balance. They can spent there and then save for later. We'll have more details on how this can be earned and the amount you can earn close to the release of the September update. Uh, previews. I didn't see this before. I think I skimmed over this. This is big. This is actually pretty big that you'll be able to preview skins. Because I can't be the only one who bought a skin and then put it in game and be like, oh, well, okay. I guess that's okay. There have been some skins that the the website preview wasn't indicative of what it looked like in game, especially when it came to lighting and stuff. 
Uh, commanders will be able to purchase individual we'll game with the previous on available entire packs. White feral paint job, you know, in person. All right. Will be uh, okay. And yeah, changing your appearance at the at the menu is is gonna be big. I like that a lot. That's that's really good. So I, that looks like the preview one though. Six twenty arcs, huh? <laughs> y or equal signs to preview A or space. So this is definitely on PC. And this is the shop. In game shop chat. Hmm. That's got me thinking. How many other games out there other than this were using a website for their shop? I don't think there was a lot that I played that had a. I think they had a companion, like you'd have a shop in game and a shop on a website that you can use either or. But this was one of the few games that I remember that would ha you would have to go to a website. Um. So what do you guys think is a good amount of time to earn a skin? How many hours of gameplay should you have to play to earn a skin? I mean, this is like a question that came up when League of Legends was, was introduced. It's like, how many hours did you need to, to, to earn enough currency to earn a skin? I genuinely don't know. I can make a guess, but I genuinely don't know. Huh. You say about a week, 24 hours, one to two weeks. They better put that sentence there. <laughs> Arc values are subject to change. What? Thirty-two fifty for a great fan of skin. I don't know. It's hard. It's really. Oh, it's gonna be a fickle thing, man. Like I don't know how to gauge it. Cause I've been playing so long. It's like I don't. I don't. I forgot what it means like to actually earn something in this game. Cause I got twelve billion credits and I can get anything I want. I think the only thing that gives me a sense of, of accomplishment is when I fully engineer a new ship. And even then, I'm so versed in the knowledge on where to get stuff that I do it so fast, you know, compared to other people. So what's a, a good measurement of effort is hard for me to visualize. Hard to really measure in time as elite activities are so weirdly varied. Exactly. That's a great point. That's a great point. Because exploration versus combat, you know? That's a good example of that. It's like you ping 40, 400 systems and you get 200 arcs. But if you, if you kill 50 ships, you get 700 arcs. You know, is that balance? It's a weird, weird thing. I feel bad for him. I don't know how Frontier is going to balance that. But no matter what they do, players are going to rise up. Uh, we couldn't end the presentation without a glimpse of what's coming at the end of the year. Fleet carriers. So ARCs is September, right? Just to be just keep it in my head. Yeah, yeah. So ARCs is September with the starter experience. And Fleet carriers is December. We got to make that delineation because some people might think this is coming in September. Um, so that's it. 
That's it, man. We're getting this guy at the end of the year. And we're getting the arc system in September. Is it sooner than you guys think? September's going to be here before you know it. Because July is practically halfway over. We're almost halfway through July. And then you're going to be like, okay, here's August. Wait a minute. September's next month, you know? I don't have equipment for lots of combat, so I would rather do mining or something else most times. Yeah. Just takes practice. I wonder how much fleet carriers will cost. I hope they're expensive. Given that they're allowing us to flood the economy, or if you can call it an economy, I hope they're expensive. Because, I mean, anybody who's done Void Opals is pretty much kind of rich, right? So, make credits great, make credits great again is my motto. <laughs> make credits great again would be to make it this a credit sink, you know? This would be this could be the end game that people well a type of end game uh eco economic end game that people can sink money into Cuz here's another thought what if you can earn money from a fleet carrier huh Just like um gosh I can never remember the name of them in Eve The player build structures in Eve like the bases you can build in Eve uh you can set up markets there and earn money off of tax. You know, that'd be really cool if you could do that in this game. Like, if you could set up a commodities market that you can stock, right? Through missions or whatever. I don't know what systems they're going to have in place with AI. But if you could set up a market that other players could buy and sell from and earn money on the tax, you know? So you could sell, like, I don't know, platinum at a discount. But charge tax and then players could trade that platinum somewhere else for profit you know i don't know business one-on-one i'm not a, i'm not a i'm not a sales guy i don't know i mean that's why when people ask me when i when i was going on and on this was a long time ago probably the last time i ranted about elite i was going on and on about how cool colonizing planets would be people were like well what's so great about building something on the planet that, that'll get boring fast and i'm like no it won't not if you include economic benefits from doing that stuff B buying and selling from players setting up a market trade outposts you know that 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 really extends the life of a game and it encourages player interaction you know and if you want to make it make it really spicy this is how you can make it really spicy. You could have players attack, give players the uh, uh, permission to attack bases and anarchy systems, but give it a benefit. You know, give it a risk reward. So if you if you establish a base on a on a planet in an anarchy system, you'll earn more money, but players can attack you. If they want to. So yeah. Now economic prestige. I don't know about you. But I love having my name attached to discovery for systems. Imagine the feeling of naming a planet or colonize it. That's true man. Excessively salty. 36 months man. How you doing? Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much for the support dude. Um. Yeah, prestige is good too. I, I agree with you. But I, I, if it's a material gathering thing, and so be it. I think material gathering should be part of it. So each, I think each construction of a fleet carrier should be like a mini CG for your squadron. Yeah. Yeah, three years, man. Enjoy that badge. Congrats again. We got a new emote, man. Lahi, buona he. A new emote. Um, I think it should. I think it should be like a mini community goal, like for your squadron, to build your fleet carrier. You need so many tons of platinum, so many tons of gold, so many 
you know, consumer electronics, uh, this many credits. You need to defend, you know, with, you know, just, just, you need to defend it from pirates. Don't make it too elaborate, though. Make it like a little mini CG. Just so the, the most dedicated solo player can do it. Yeah, squadron goal, exactly. Like a dedicated solo player can do it, but it will be fun still for like a group of 10 or 20 people. And scale it with the size of your squadron. But don't get too crazy with the big squadrons. Warframe taught us that's a bad idea. Yeah, so the smaller the squadron, the lesser the requirements. Right? But now that I think about that, they probably should make multiple size carriers. Because it wouldn't be that fair if one person could get a fleet carrier in a day and then it takes a squadron of 200 people a week to do it, you know, and they have the same thing. So, I, I don't know. That, that That's not a very thought out idea. I'm just, I'm brainstorming right now. Not too thought out, <laughs> but something like that, you know, something to to get players involved in squadrons, because I think giving squadrons a goal will keep people playing. The game will only go free to play if the new arcs currency helps them earn enough extra dollars. I, I honestly think the game is eventually going to go free to play, even though they said no. I think their frontier is going to say at one point, "Hey, we have hit our what is it, ten year whatever vision." So now that we've hit our vision, we'll go free to play. I think they're going to do that at some point. But like I said, you know, it's it's it's, it's far fetched. I don't know, honestly, uh, Masuko, I don't know how they're staying afloat now. How healthy is the player base and the uh, and the uh, people buying skins on the on on the market? How how is that keeping the company afloat now? Because I don't I don't I don't think the player count is that high right now. Like I know they're making money off of Jurassic World licensing and all that stuff and just sales. Planet Coaster is making them decent money. Um, didn't they get a massive amount through Kickstarter in the beginning? Yeah, but they've burned through all that. They're still profitable. Like, they're, they're, that Kickstarter money has been burned. I mean, they've used that to, to make the game. Um, but they've been releasing their financials, and they receive you know, revenue from us buying the game and skins. So they've been profitable over the years. Because their company's not that wasn't that big over the, over the last few years, but they've grown. They've been hiring. They've got a new building. They've been expanding. They're doing more than multiple types of games. So I don't, I wonder if they're. I wonder if the game is funding all of that now. Because. You know, we arrogant year one elite players, myself included, say that we funded the other games. We claim that elite is their biggest game and that we funded Planet Coaster and we funded Jurassic World. Um, so it's like the other way around that we're funding these other games. So if elite's player count is not that big right now, I wonder how they're going to sustain. I, I know Arx is going to be a, an injection of income. I know Arx is going to be an injection of income because initially there's going to be a lot of purchase of Arx. A lot of it. Uh, but like you guys said up above, scrolling up, like Arx is probably not going to be enough money to carry the company. What's up, Coco Jumbo? I'm I'm in pure speculation mode, guys. Don't I'm not ranting or anything like that. It's just it's interesting to talk about this because um, the company's in an interesting position right now. They're in an interesting position because we're in a maintenance, kind of like in a maintenance cycle right now, until we get to the 2020 update. 
And these these two nuggets that they threw us should keep some players uh, held over. But you gotta wonder how they're doing financially. And they they released their their financials publicly, so we'll know soon enough. The peak amount of players in the past 24 hours just on Steam is 5.9k players. So they may they must be making a decent amount of money off the game. Okay. Player count is one thing, but When I say population, I usually mean like Returning and I guess enthusiasts. Those players I talked about that buy multiple copies of the game, that buy skins, that gift skins. It's kind of hard to to quantify that though. And yeah, there's new players trying it out, and and the Valve Index is coming out right. The Valve Index VR. Because this game gets spikes in population when some new VR solution hits. Because it's like the poster child for VR games. Right? Um, so when the Valve Index hits critical mass, there's going to be a new surge of enthusiasts. I don't know how many. Because the Valve Index is pretty expensive. Um, they're going to try Elite. Because let's face it, it's one of the best VR games out there. It's, it's one of the best VR games out there, so it's very interesting. 